It's probably hard to believe that some of our local shops are haunted. However, in the case of this shop on Pelzor High Street, behind closed doors paranormal activity is often seen, heard and experienced. When I interviewed Rebecca of Spa back in 2013, when I was researching for my Ghosts Around Pelsall 2 book, she told me that the staff of the shop experienced lots of paranormal activity on a regular basis. To begin with, Rebecca told me that on one occasion she had heard a man at the top of the stairs in the shop. She then went on to explain to me that she and another member of staff had been working on the conveyor belt which goes to and from the stock rooms upstairs. Whilst working on it, the two ladies suddenly heard a man's voice at the top of the stairs. Terrified because they knew no one else was up there, the ladies stopped the conveyor belt immediately and ran back downstairs to the shop. A large man has often been seen standing at the top of the stairs by members of staff. Also, quite strangely, members of staff have been tickled by disembodied hands at the top of the stairs, which is a rather unusual and unique phenomenon. The kettle in the staff room is well known for switching itself on before staff get chance to. Rebecca said, that this has happened to herself and other members of staff regularly. When they have gone up to the staff room to put the kettle on for a hot drink, they have found that it's already boiling. Although most paranormal activity experienced at spa seems to take place on the stairs, the upper floor and in the staff room, it is not confined to these areas and can take place at any time of the day or night. During a refurbishment back in 2013, the butcher at the shop had to man the area at night on his own. At this time he was witnessed to and unnerved by disembodied voices and strange shapes forming in the shop. At the back of the shop, the butcher witnessed a dark shadow walk between the deli and the butcher's door. He and the cleaner have also witnessed the key-coded door freely open and shut by itself when they have been the only two people in the building. Both the butcher and the cleaner have regularly seen ghosts and heard disembodied voices in the empty shop. This rather strange and seemingly mischievous paranormal activity at Spa reminded me of something I wrote in issue 14 and 15 of my Pelsall Times magazine back in 2002. Many, many years ago, an old and rather splendid property occupied where Spa stands today. The photograph here shows the rear of the building. At this time, the property was occupied by two elderly ladies by the name of Mrs. Slack and Mrs. Hope. Mrs. Slack kept a small yellow monkey, which was quite a character. In her younger years, Mrs. Slack had been a teacher at the church school and Mr. Slack had been the head teacher of the Wesleyan school. On one occasion, Mr. and Mrs. Slack went on a trip to Africa, which in those days was almost unheard of. On their return, Mrs. Slack brought with her a little yellow monkey who soon made its presence felt in the village. Everyone knew when Mrs. Slack had her monkey with her when she was out and about as the monkey's tail could be seen sticking out of her coat somewhere. On rare occasions the little monkey would make a bid for freedom and would head for the dizzy heights of the trees on the common. It was then that the children in the village could test their agility by attempting to catch the monkey and return it home. It is unknown whatever happened to Mrs. Hope, Mrs. Slack and the little yellow monkey. However, it is known that when they left the property, Dr. Wynne moved in. Dr. Wynne's surgery was situated behind the property. When called out late at night, it was not unusual for Dr. Wynne, who was a large man, 
to turn up in an overcoat and hat together with his pyjamas and slippers. It would, of course, be impossible to say why Spa should be haunted by such an unusual array of ghosts and paranormal activity. However, I would venture to suggest that based on descriptions given, perhaps the concerned ghost of Dr Wynne may still be in the building. As for staff being tickled by disembodied hands, I did wonder if perhaps the ghost of the mischievous monkey is responsible, especially as he liked to make his presence felt when he lived in Pelsall.